The School of Hard Knocks 23 took place at the Subway Soccer Center in Calgary. Professional and amateur fighters from across Canada battled it out in the Hard Knocks cage. Gentlemen, this School of Hard Knocks fight is an amateur bout in the 205 pound division and is brought to you by Phantom Shots. And now, let's meet the fighters. He's coming to you out of Drumheller. This is Matthew Norman. Now, Matthew Norman comes to the cage in the independent out of Drumheller, uh, making his amateur debut in the 205 pound weight class. Standing six feet tall, just 22 years old, as he gets ready to step in the cage. And uh, interesting, Jeremy, about Drum Heller, it's not that he's an independent by choice, it's just that he's got a, a heck of a commute to the nearest gym. Yeah, Drum Heller isn't close to, um, well, anything. Uh, lots of dinosaurs to wrestle, uh, but unfortunately, uh, nobody that uh, he can train with. But he started training a few years ago. He's a fan of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and uh, he followed uh, gentlemen uh, such as uh, Leona Machida and uh, wanted to follow in more of that karate style and uh, has trained that and he's ready to go for his amateur debut. Now it's interesting when I talked to him last night at the weigh-ins he said he'd rather fight a 1-0 fighter like Cody Clark and an 0-1 fighter because a 1-0 fighter is going to be a tougher challenge. Now at, at this point in their careers I'm going to suggest you could get an awfully tough challenge from an 0-1 fighter as well. But he knows that Cody Clark is a winner, has been proven a winner in the cage. And if he's going to be among the best in his weight class, he knows he needs to fight the best in his weight class. And for him at this level, that's a guy like Cody Clark. Well, and some guys just want to fight the hardest possible opponents. They, they just, they crave over the competition. And, uh, and hopefully uh, that doesn't come back to bat, bite Matt Norman. And his opponent. He's fighting out of Calgary. This is Cody Clark. So Cody Clark makes his way down to the cage out of Calgary, Alberta, fighting out of Dynamic MMA. And talking to him last night, he said uh, that his fight against Bryce Berry that he won at Hard Knocks 22 was an interesting fight for him because he wasn't really ready to step into the cage. He thought it was Bryce Berry punching him very hard in the face that woke him up to the fact that he was in a fight. And after that, it was all Cody Clark. Well, and Bryce Berry hits hard. Uh, and uh, the, the one who can attest to that is definitely Cody Clark. Uh, but he said that that's a great thing because he knows how hard Bryce Berry hits. Uh, we've seen the effect of some Bryce Berry hits. And uh, he's happy that he knows that his chin can hold up to that kind of a beating. Uh, some guys, again, you want to fight against the toughest guys possible to prove that you are that uh, you are that way. And the higher your competition, the harder you're going to want to train for him. We talked, Matt Norman talked about it. And now Cody Clark saying that uh, he's ready to fight against anybody. And uh, he's looking forward to uh, maybe making Matt Norman eat his words. Now, I also asked him about fighting a, a, an independent fighter because, again, when guys are making their debuts, you think, oh, well, he's a Gracie Baja fighter or he's a dynamic fighter, and that will give you some clues as to who they are as a fighter. But fighting against an independent, he's got absolutely no idea what Matthew Norman will bring to the table. Well, who has an idea is Jaden Ants, who's going to be in the center of the cage with our fighter introductions. 
And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the Rig Pig Apparel Blue Corner, it's his amateur debut. He's 22 years old and stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 204 and one half pounds, fighting independently from Drumheller. Please welcome Hard Knocks Fighter, Matthew Norman! And in the Flamin's Fitness Red Corner, he's 1-0 as an amateur, 22 years old, and stands 6 feet, 3 inches tall. He weighed in at 204 pounds, fighting out of Dynamic MMA from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Cody the Lumberjack Clark! This bout will be contested under amateur rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Len Coivisto. So Lynn Coivisto back in the center of the cage for this fight between the black and camo trunks, red corner of Cody Clark and the black and white Hayabusa trunks out of Matthew Norman. And Cody comes out with some quick punches, but Norman quick to get out of the way. Yeah, some good slips there by Norman. Now, uh, just to the point when when I started doing a little bit of Muay Thai with Nick Ring, I didn't do much because uh, he punches really hard, but he mentioned that when you're slipping a punch, you want it to just miss you. You don't want it to miss by a mile, you want it to just miss you. And very nice slips by Matthew Norman, uh, and that's something that Leona Machida is famous for, is just barely slipping punches. So both fighters getting in, more of the strikes coming from Clark, especially with leg kicks, a big leg kick there thrown by Norman though, struck the back leg, I believe. Yeah, it went around that front leg and ended up hitting that back leg, so uh, some funky things. And a nice little quick jab as, uh, as Cody Clark was stepping in and a returning kick from Cl Cody Clark. Nice big kick there from Clark. Norman storms forward and eats a right hand for his trouble and eats another kick. These kicks will start to take their toll when boys as big as these two are start kicking one another. One of their legs is going to have trouble. Yeah, there's another kick there. Uh, you can definitely see the karate uh, background from Matt Norman. Uh, coming in for a leg attack and good, heads the outside. Caught in the guillotine, but he landed in side position. If he stays there, he's in safe position and he does get to a half guard. You're not really going to be able to guillotine a guy out. Excellent job here by Matthew Norman getting to the side. He's got an arm around his neck, but in the side position, he's not in any danger of being choked out. Cody Clark doing everything he can to try and get back to a half guard. And there we go, now a side control. And uh, no, again, no striking to the head of a downed opponent, so you won't see a typical ground and pound. So it's kind of an even keel here, uh, being on bottom and being on top. A lot more jiu-jitsu from the bottom than from the top because jiu-jitsu is again designed to use opponent's strength against him. So when an opponent is in a strong position, you use it against. You see triangles, you'll see, uh, you know, see kimuras, you'll see uh, even arm bars from the bottom. Uh, from the top, there's not as much options. So kind of 50-50, whereas in a ground and pound situation, uh, it's more 90-10 because you can get punched in the face on the bottom and it hurts. So Cody Clark doing a good job in the guard of limiting damage. Matthew Norman trying to break free, but not much doing. Looking to pass there and get swept for his trouble. Cody Clark on top now, and he's dropping elbows and knees, or elbows and punches to the body, which is a legal form of ground and pound, which is 10 seconds left here in round number one, doing everything he can to strike damage to the body of Matthew Norman and convince the judges that this round should be his. Yeah, and Cody Clark just stole that round. In my, in my eyes, if, I, if I'm a judge, Cody Clark stole that round. Matthew Norman, I thought, looked a lot calmer on his feet, had the takedown, had some control on the bottom. But that was taking an opponent over and doing everything you can to cause damage to your opponent, which is what the judges want to see. Uh, it's, it's a very close round no matter what, but I think Cody Clark might have just stolen it there. And here both uh, fighters get securing a kick and uh, I believe we're going to see the takedown here and a nice drive through takedown and you can see Cody Clark almost give up the takedown for the guillotine attack 
but ended up uh, in, in a bad position for a good half the round. I think he had the better of the striking before this point, but uh, Massey Normick doing a good job of rotating around so that he can maintain that side control position. Yeah, it's important if somebody's got your hand around your neck to end up in side control. It takes away all the torque. There's no ability to hip in and uh, be able to put the pressure that's required to be able to choke a guy out. Um, if you, you look at Matt Norman, he is going to want to watch as he goes forward. His hands went really wide there. Um, anyone who's had an extra part of wrestling and been trained in wrestling specifically is going to be able to catch those arms underneath, and you're, then you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, so he's going to want to shoot his arms straight forward ahead. But he did secure the takedown. Close round, I don't want to call it. Uh, you know, might have been a stolen again by Cody Clark right at the end. But uh, we'll see at the end of the fight. Well, round number two is just about underway. The doors are closed, the fighters are ready, the ref is ready, and we are underway for round number two here at the School of Hard Knocks 23, live from the Subway Soccer Center in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Brand new venue, you like it here. It is a nice venue, uh, better seating, I think, uh, than previous locations. Big swinging punch thrown by Norman there. Clark coming forward. Nice leg kick. Again, those leg kicks will start to, to take their toll over time, but Norman doing a good job of pressing forward, keeping his eyes on Cody Clark, making sure that he's got an idea of where those hands are coming from. And Norman is, uh, I mentioned it before, Norman is really uh, aware of range because he did not have his hands up at all, and Cody Clark, nice shot there by Norman. Cody Clark threw some big shots, and they were inch or they were centimeters away from the nose of Matthew Norman, and he just stood there and let those things go in front of him. Uh, uh, very aware of how the range works for Cody Clark, uh, and that's a good sign for Matt Norman. Both fighters now circling. The coaches of Cody Clark imploring him to start kicking. And you're kick taking he does. the base, and, and it seems to be working it's a little more tender uh, is Matt Norman, I believe, because he started to back up when he saw that other leg kick coming. He threw his front leg behind him to guard against it, uh, as opposed to checking the kick, Jim. Yeah. Well, he's he seems to have something in mind of what he wants to do. Uh, you see as he's moving forward, he's got, he's got a, a mission in mind, and it doesn't seem to phase him, all these other things that are happening to him. Uh, it is counting on the judges' scorecards, though. And those are uh, reliable to a point. <laughs> uh, but sometimes, uh, of course, I've only got one of the six sides of the cage to look through here. Um, and sometimes it looks a little different to other people. You heard me mention in the last fight, hands up. Um, and I think it being an important thing if you are in a Muay Thai style. Matt Norman is keeping his hands at his waist. And what this is doing with his ability and the karate that he does, uh, and of course I'm, I'm contradicted right away because he just took a nice left uh, jab, uh, but uh, he knows his space and he knows the range of Cody Clark, and he's almost tempting Clark to step in with big power punches because he sees those hands down, and uh, maybe looking to counter, which is more the karate style. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hit or miss on the hands up thing. I, I still would want to protect my chin if it were me. Cody Clark continuing with leg kicks, continuing to move forward. Uh, both fighters taking the opportunity to move forward. A big kick there caught by Norman looking for a takedown. Standing here. arm triangle too. With just five seconds to go though, no time for that submission to sink in. Cody Clark, though, again, here's that final bell, and I talked about it uh, at the end of the first round in the Pomerleau Combs fight. He hears that 10 second clapper, and he throws everything he has at his opponent trying to finish the fight, trying to leave an impression on the judges before they get to their scorecards for the end of the round. Well, they say the judges have short memories. And uh, if you are the last thing that they remember and it's you coming forward and doing damage, then of course they're gonna be able to uh, give, you, give you the round. And we see some exchanges here, a couple slips and a nice leg kick. Uh, those will start to add up. And again, definitely adding up on judges' scorecards. So right now, a close fight between the two. It kind of depends on what you're looking for as a judge. But uh, I think at this point, I'm gonna put uh, Cody Clark uh, ahead 
uh, in this fight uh, because of, again, the, the results of the first round, flipping him over and ending the round on top. And again, landed the better of the strikes in the second round. Yeah, he, he is landing the better of the strikes. Uh, those leg kicks are, are definitely counting. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if Matt Norman is not being aggressive enough. I know he wants to counter, but there's a point at this, this point of the fight you have to assume, because they're close rounds, you have to assume that you've lost. So you need to come forward. Uh, you're going to watch Cody Clark pick up the pace, um, and I think Matt Norman needs to be more aggressive if he wants to be successful in this fight. So Norman in the black and white trunks out of the blue corner, the black and camo for Cody Clark out of the red corner, and we are underway for the third and final round. A very slow takedown attempt, and, and then, then an, an, uppercut. an uppercut that came through, and that one caught Cody Clark, but like he mentioned before, a big punch is what woke him up against Bryce Berry, and he ate that uppercut and smiled about it. Absolutely, and here comes the standing guillotine attempt, and I really hope that Cody Clark's got it deep, but I don't know if he's necessarily around the neck. Lots of pressure on the back of the neck. It's not comfortable, but I don't know whether uh, whether Matthew Norman's going to get tapped out by this. Now sunk in a little bit deeper. And just leaning back for everything it's worth is Cody Clark hanging off of Matt Norman up against the cage and trying to slip it in. There it is, a little deeper. He's got both arms under. It's no longer an arm in guillotine choke up against the cage. And Norman does a good job to get that arm back in there and relieve some of the pressure. Yeah, and this might burn out arms, although in a three-minute round, it's not so uh, crucial at the beginning of the round and, to have your arms burnt out. And Norman looks gassed. His hands are both down by his side for a significant time until Cody Clark got out on top, and now after a scramble, he ends up on top. And we saw what he was doing here the last time he was on top, and he adds a knee to the offense here as he continues to drop elbows and punches into the chest and midsection of Matthew Norman. Yeah, the amateur, the amateur rules, you want to be inside control. The concern here is you don't see much weight being put on to Matthew Norman. I know that Cody Clark is creating space to be able to strike, but uh, if Norman has a little bit of extra gas, he'll be able to slip out of there because there's nothing holding him down at this point. And a minute 15 or a minute five now remaining in round number three, and a big knee going to the midsection of uh, Matthew Norman. Cody Clark has landed all kinds of unanswered strikes here, and uh, admittedly not in danger of losing the fight in this position is Matthew Norman, but not in danger, certainly not going to win a round, just getting elbowed in the chest for a minute and a half. Well, and we've seen body blows end fights before at all levels of MMA. Uh, you drop an elbow and you hit somebody in the kidney or the liver, uh, that ends fights. Uh, I, I've been punched in the liver and I, I fell down. Well, there's a reason you're outside the cage. Cody Clark, though, now in control of this fight with just 20 seconds to go. Norman, though, looking for an arm bar, might have had it, but Cody Clark not giving that arm up, and he's just giving driving him some knees. knees. And this fight is called over as Matthew Norman had nothing left, and Cody Clark gets a finish with just seconds remaining in the third round. Yeah, and Cody Clark, uh, it's you have the audacity to try and armbar me? Well, I'm going to knee you in the side six times, as hard as I possibly can, for just even thinking that you can do that to me. So we'll wait for the official decision, but there's the replay. As uh, you can see, Matthew Norman trying the vacation. submission. Make sure you plan your next trip with Paradise Canyon Vacations. You can visit them upstairs at the Paradise Canyon Vacations booth up in the top corner. But as they roll over, and you can see here Norman trying to grab the arm, but was unable to do so. And from there, it was all knees and elbows from Cody Clark. Yeah, I, I really don't necessarily want to watch these because those are right on top of the shoulder. That is going to smart for a while. Uh, good killer instinct here by Cody Clark, seeing that his opponent wasn't doing much. And uh, great, uh, great job now, 2-0 and as an amateur at 205 pounds. And, you know, he's only been training for a very short time. And uh, nothing, nothing but up here, giving some uh, talk to the hometown fans. It looks like we have the official decision in the center of the Ladies cage. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official decision brought to you by Phantom Shots. The winner 
by referee stoppage due to unanswered blows at two minutes and 50 seconds in the third round. In the red corner, Cody the Lumberjack Clark! Cody Clark, 2-0 at 205 pounds. He's gonna be in the center of the cage with Ryan Ballantyne. Cody, I'll get you here center of the cage. When we talked yesterday, you said in your Bryce Berry fight, it took a big punch to wake you up and get you going. Now, there was an uppercut early in the third round. Yes, smile came on your face, and there was no looking back. Was that the wake up punch? A little bit, yeah. Now, we've got the replay all queued up here to take a look at the finish. He tried to roll you over into an arm bar, and it seems like that was a mistake. Yeah, I practiced that a lot. So, so when you get into this position now, looking at the elbow, why switch from the elbows to the knees? Knees hurt. <laughs> oh, they, they certainly seem to, as he was just kind of taking them for the last five, I, I, I think if five seconds left in the fight, uh, when you got the finish, did you want the finish rather than the decision? Uh, you know, in a fight with him, he's a tough guy. A lot of people would have quit on those knees early on, but he stood through, so I'm happy with the finish, but I would have been happy going to decision with that guy. So well, I'm sure you've got coaches and, and trainers to thank? Uh, all my coaches at Dynamic, Vince, RJ, Devin, Daryl, Matt. I thank all of them. Thank all the fighters, Jason, Zach, Dia. They helped me get ready for this fight. And uh, I want to thank everybody at Dynamic and everybody who came out to support me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner, Cody Clark. To find out more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. This School of Hard Knocks fight is an amateur bout in the 205 pound division and is brought to you by Human Canvas. And now, let's meet the fighters. He's coming to you out of Toronto. This is Ryan Shanahan. Ryan Shanahan out of big man Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Toronto, Ontario, coming down making his amateur debut at age 38. And an interesting story behind this fighter, Jeremy, said he was watching Hard Knocks on the Fight Network, saw the Do You Want to Become a Fighter ad, called the number, and a year later, he's in the cage. Because he found a gym that was near him, he trained for a year, he contacted Hard Knocks and said, I've been training, I'm ready to go, I want to fight amateur, and I want to fight for Hard Knocks, all because he saw the commercial on TV at age 38, stepping into the cage for the first time. And people say the television advertising doesn't work anymore. Well, I apparently did not skip past a commercial on uh, the old PDR there, but uh, I used to play semi-pro hockey in the ECHL. Uh, said he wasn't afraid to drop the mitts on the ice, so he's also not afraid to drop the mitts off the ice either. Yeah, and anybody who's ever watched an ECHL hockey, a hockey game, those guys are uh, fight uh, a lot. They, uh, it's, it's those guys who uh, haven't necessarily made the skill level to get up to the NHL or in the AHL. And you'll see if, if you look at a lot of the fighters in the NHL currently, a lot of them have some ECHL experience because that is a tough league to play in. So uh, you can tell that Ryan Shanahan from big man Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Toronto, Ontario is, uh, is gonna have a chin on him, that's for sure. And his opponent. He's fighting out of Calgary. This is Phil Towler. So Phil Towler comes down to the cage. The gauntlet was thrown by his girlfriend earlier tonight. Chris Pomerlo said if he doesn't win the fight, he has to ride home in the car like a, quote, little bitch, end quote. So we'll see if uh, Phil Towler can avoid that fate as he comes down to the cage out of MMA University. Has been training for a long time, he said, but he owns three 
separate companies, and as a result, that's kind of kept him from getting into the cage and training full time. Well, I have one job, and if he's got three, he's definitely the hardest working MMA fighter I know, that he can uh, balance a training and three separate companies. Um, I, I give his girlfriend credit. Uh, he's a big guy. I don't think I would want to call him a little bitch, even if he lost his fight. No, and I certainly won't uh, at any point. I'll leave that for her. But uh, a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, uh, an adrenaline junkie, says he's not really worried about nerves headed into this fight because it, to him, it's a glorified sparring session. If he treats it as a training, if he treats it as a sparring session, just because his opponent can punch him in the face as hard as he wants, doesn't mean that the end result doesn't need to be the same for him. Yeah, and again, you're looking at Phil Taller. Uh, being with, with MMA University, they're very good at being rounded fighters. They, they don't specialize in anything. Yes, he's a purple uh, belt in jiu-jitsu, but they're, they're such a rounded and they spend equal time on all aspects of the game, which is submission, grappling, striking. They spend it all. And, and it's, it's great to see gyms that are not necessarily specializing in having that ability to, to broaden their horizons. And this is a, a MMA university brings coaches in. They bring in coaches to be able to necessarily teach a different way. You, uh, they, they'll bring in a jiu-jitsu coach to, that will teach it a different way. So you have multiple different ways to get each technique. Uh, each coach teaches it differently. You look at uh, many forms of jiu-jitsu and uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu as well. And uh, there's ways, different ways to get this. And uh, I'm looking forward to this fight and seeing the well-rounded game of Phil Tower. And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the Rig Pig Apparel Blue Corner, it's his amateur debut. He's 38 years old and stands six feet, two inches tall and weighed in at 204 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Big Man BJJ and Gary Goodrich, Pride Legends from Toronto, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Ryan the Bullhammer Shanahan. And in the Flamin's Fitness Red Corner, it's his amateur debut. He's 30 years old and stands five feet. 10 inches tall, and weighed in at 203 pounds, fighting out of MMA University from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Phil Taller. This bout will be contested under amateur rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Len Coivisto. So Len Coivisto back in charge in the center of the cage. Ryan Shanahan taking on Phil Towler. And if I showed you a picture of both of these guys, there is no way you would think them in the same weight class. A serious height and reach advantage for Shanahan over the much wider build of Phil Towler. Yeah, I would have I would have pegged uh, Ryan Shanahan at 185, and uh, he. Uh, Phil Towler definitely looks 205. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a fairly decent cut to get down to it. But big legs on Shanahan, actually. If you take a look, he's got those pro skater's legs. And uh, I'm sure they carry quite a lot of muscle in them. And that is where the weight comes from. Good accurate striking to start the fight. Both fighters feeling each other out. Well, you mentioned MMA University, uh, well-trained all of their fighters that we've seen here in the Hard Knocks cage, but Ryan Shanahan training under Gary Goodrich. Uh, Pride fans will remember uh, a very accomplished fighter in his own right uh, and runs the gym out there in Toronto. Good takedown there uh, by Phil Towler, uh, more of a football tackle than a, uh, a double leg, but trying to slip into that arm triangle there. He's got a mount, he needs to get to the other side and then start to rotate around. But uh, big arms there, he needs to get his head a little lower too. That's gonna end up helping uh, if you get his head underneath that elbow. Uh, but uh, nice and tight and he's looking There's to tap, the tap. there it is. Phil Towler gets the tap and has something to say about it on the way out. As Ryan Shanahan falls to an arm triangle and Phil Towler gets a win in his amateur debut. We've got the official Ladies decision on the side of the cage. We have the official Jayden decision Nance. brought to you by Human Canvas. The winner 
due to tap out, due to an arm triangle. At one minute and 17 seconds in the very first round, in the red corner, Phil Towler! Phil Towler winning his amateur debut. And uh, looks very so happy. So Phil, we'll will talk to you here money. in the center of the cage. Now, you said to me when I came into the cage, I'm not allowed to let her call me a little bitch. I guess the car ride home will be a good one. Uh, we were playing a competition. Who can uh, win first? <laughs> I won. So, Faye, you finished your opponent off in the first round. I'm sure we got the replay queued up. Walk us through the finish, if you would. I just got on top, he put his guard down, had the arm the whole time, felt him uh, start to struggle, readjusted, got him nice and tight, and just squeezed. Now, you said you'd been training for a long time before you got to get into the Hard Knocks cage. Are you gonna have to wait that long before we see you again? <laughs> no. I'll be back soon. And I'm sure you got coaches and sponsors to thank. Yeah, all the boys at MMAU, my little family, all the guys from Edmonton and Red Deer that came down, Calgary people that came here, my best friend Mike, my family, couldn't do it without you. Oh, and my girlfriend too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner, Phil Towler. more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this school of Hard Knocks Fight is a professional bout in the 145 pound division and is brought to you by Parapurn Canada Limited. And now, let's meet the fighter. He's fighting out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. This is Mike O'Neill. So Mike O'Neill comes down to the cage, coming out of Thunder Bay, Ontario, and the fight center, coming off a loss. He said he took a title fight at 135 pounds, and it was too much weight to cut. He's a 145-pound fighter. He felt that dropping that much weight and getting into that low weight class eventually wasn't worth the title shot because at the end of the day, he gets another loss on his pro record and these are the losses that count. We talked about amateur losses not counting earlier, but these are the fights that count. And uh, he ended up uh, ended up just finding himself uh, without, with no gas uh, at the end uh, because he cut too much weight. Well, and uh, speaking of weight cutting, uh, he's, he's surprised at how far Jesse Arnett, his opponent, drops down to wrestle. Uh, Jesse Arnett wrestles at 132 pounds, and uh, he cuts down to make 145, uh, and it's a fairly tough cut for 145, so you can imagine that. But uh, you look at Mike O'Neill was mentioning, he saw the chance of Bun fight, and he doesn't think much of the opponent that uh, Jesse was facing. He doesn't think much, much of chance of Bun, and he thinks that Jesse fights like a Neanderthal. Mike actually refers to himself as a caveman, says he fights like a Neanderthal and uh, and will do that. Going in to give a little love to Jaden Ann. He wants to be around uh, a happy go, go lucky fighter and uh, we'll see how he deals with Jesse Arnett. And his opponent. Jesse Arnett comes down to the cage from the Rock FC and Tilt MMA. He's coming to you out of Calgary. This is Jesse Arnett. And Jesse Arnett, again, uh, you mentioned, cuts down to 132 to wrestle. Did that two weeks ago for the national championships and finished third in the country at 132 a very accomplished wrestler, a three-time national champion, has been on the national team, has been wrestling since 1998, works his jiu-jitsu with Anderson Goncalves, the best jiu-jitsu coach here in the city of Calgary. I, 
Jesse Arnett is quick. Yeah, he's uh, he's very fast. Uh, his loss is he's one on one as a pro. His loss came against Wolfgang Jansen, who we just watched. And again, you mentioned that fight. Both fighters dropped one another. Rubber legged uh, is is a good term. Uh, three times each. And then there was some kicks and some big takedowns and submission attempts back and forth and then finally caught in a triangle. And Jesse Arnett came up to me right after that fight. He apologized to me. I, I don't know why he did that, but he apologized. He says, I'm never getting caught in that again, ever. And he stared me right in the eyes and said, never, ever. Yeah, he, uh, he came up and apologized to me. He apologized pretty much to anybody he ran into that night. Uh, which just kind of goes to show you what kind of guy Jesse is, uh, apologizing for losing. Again, if you haven't seen it, see it. And if you did see it, go back and watch it again because it is, uh, again, uh, for my money, the best fight that Hard Knocks has put on yet. Although the fights are getting better and better, and I'm sure we'll see one that eclipses it for right now, that's the gold standard. And Jesse Arnett looks ready. And who else looks ready as Jaden answers in the center of the cage. And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the rig pig apparel blue corner, he's one and two as a professional, 28 years old, and stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 146 pounds, fighting out of the fight center from Thunder Bay. Please welcome Hard Knocks Fighter, Mike, the caveman bully, O'Neal! And in the Flamin's Fitness Red Corner, he's one and one as a professional, 27 years old, and stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 145 and one half pounds, fighting out of Rock FC and Tilt MMA from Calgary, Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Jesse Big Cat Arnett! <laughs> this belt will be contested under professional rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Brian Beauchamp. Gentlemen, bring it in. Okay, we went over the rules in the back room on a clean, fair fight. Protect yourself at times. We my command at all times. Let's touch gloves and make it official. Uh, earlier tonight, I was talking to CEO Ari Tobe. He predicted this to be the fight of the night. Jesse Arnett versus Mike O'Neill. Arnett in the black shorts and uh, O'Neill in the black trunks. And a big leg kick and a kick to the face. Jesse Arnett is rocked and down. O'Neill swarms him. It looks like Arnett is back and conscious again, but he was in trouble. Well, and the kick happened when he was on the ground. He had both knees on the ground, and then there was the kick. So this is... And Jesse Arnett taps. Mike O'Neill is your winner, and Arnett is in trouble. Yeah, Jesse doesn't necessarily know where he is right now, and why should he? That, that kick was... That was like a, a, a kick on the ground, and... That, there, there's some yeah, discussion you got from the judges because that may not have been a legal kick. And we'll see what the official decision is here, but it let, you're right, Jeremy, and we'll see if we can get a replay queued up here and, and see if we can't uh, get a replay and see what happened because it did look like Jesse was down when the kick came. And we'll see here, no, he's, he's, on, he's on his both feet. So that was a legal kick right to the face. Jesse Arnett got caught. And, uh, and I'm sure he will be apologizing to us later and promising that that won't happen to him again. But a nasty kick from Mike O'Neill, who evens his record at two and two. Yeah, let's just, we're gonna have a look at this on the Feature Fights replay. Uh, good leg kick there, brings Jesse Arnett down. And Jesse coming right up to his feet again. There's the leg kick, brings him down. And then, yeah, definitely on his hands there. That's a huge kick, a lot of damage there. And you could see the blood pouring out of the nose of Jesse Arnett, who, uh, yeah, he, that was a, a big shot there. And uh, you, we look over at Mike O'Neill coming over to uh, check to see if Jesse's okay. Jesse Arnett's okay. You could see the amount of blood 
uh, on the ground that must have come out of Jesse Arnett's No, Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official decision brought to you by Parapurn Canada Limited. The winner by referee stoppage due to tap out by submission at 22 seconds in the very first round in the blue corner, Mike the Caveman Bully O'Neill! So O'Neill pushing his record to two and two, he's with Ryan. <laughs> Mike, uh, a, a quick fight uh, that happened. It looked like it was pretty close with the hand coming off the ground when the kick was delivered. Did, were you anticipating him standing up? Exactly, I saw him start to come up and it was probably close, I'm not gonna deny that, but right where I am, I saw him lift his hands up, I threw the kick, the replay showed it, his hand came off. I don't want to feel like an asshole, but you know, the guy came out and swung. Let's see the replay. Well, and we'll walk through the replay here. We'll see it if we can slow it down at all. Yeah, it... yeah, buddy. Wow, and we're running it back. Watch, I kicked his leg out. His legs are going up. Yeah, there... yeah his, his legs and arms are up when you land the kick. An impressive kick nonetheless. Now, I got told that the wife was at home worried you were going to get hurt not long enough to get hurt tonight. She wasn't worried about me getting hurt. She was worried about me not getting paid enough. <laughs> you know, she's got a spending, she's got a check to spend now when I get home. So that's, you know, I'm, did I actually submit him? I thought that was a knockout. <laughs> I'm <fucking> stupid. <laughs> well, te technically a submission. He does tap at, uh, after all the blood came out there. But uh, nevertheless, a nice performance, a, a nice showing against a tough opponent. And I'm sure you got sponsors and uh, coaches to thank. Well, I gotta thank Scott at Cross Video 07 and Dave. They got me in great shape. Uh, my wife for putting up with me. My beautiful little girls who I fucking miss right now. Uh, freaking pansy, I was crying because I had to leave them. Uh, my cornerman, Chris. Mike, I'm not even gonna try your last name. I know it's laser, but close enough. Uh, Vince for stepping in and all uh, my buddies. And let's see Jared Milko keep it going. And uh, thanks, Mom and Dad. Love you always. Thank you. And I am the Neanderthal. You're right, buddy. One more time for your winner, Mike O'Neill. One last thing. The announcer got my age wrong. I'm not that old. I'm 27. <laughs> Let's not jump the gun here. I still think I'm 19. 27-year-old <laughs> Mike O'Neill. So again, Mike O'Neill pushing his record to 2-2. Two and two, and that, as you look at the replay, it is, it is instantaneous. It is the second that hand, it, it, it's almost a millisecond where that hand comes off the, the mat, and just as it's coming off the mat, that kick, kick connects. And uh, I know that uh, Jesse Arnett's corner is, uh, is upset about that. They think it's an illegal kick, uh, but there's official review process, and uh, if it is deemed illegal, they'll uh, rechange it to a no contest. But as it stands now, Mike O'Neill with a huge kick for the win. To find out more about Hard Knocks fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the Great Pig Apparel Blue Quarter, he's 1-0 as an amateur, 39 years old, and stands 6 feet 3 inches tall. He weighed in at 184 and 1 half pound, Fighting out of Banff Karate from Banff, Alberta, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Damon Miller! And in the Two Amigos Moving and Storage Red Corner, he's one and four as an amateur, 30 years old, and stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 185 pounds, Fighting out of Dynamic MMA from Calgary, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Bob Bentley. This 
bout will be contested under amateur rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Brian Beauchamp. Brian Beauchamp again in charge of the cage as Bo Bentley and Damon Miller get set to square off. Miller with a significant height advantage and a reach advantage and knowing what he can do as a striker, it'll be interesting to see how Bentley can get inside and if Bentley can get inside Miller's strikes. Yeah, Bentley looks a lot thicker than the last time we see him. And again, it does come down to the fact that he is in a 15 pound heavier weight class, but he looks even uh, broad, more broad against the shoulders. His musculature is much more than we've seen him. So uh, we'll see that if this is a different fighter, in on the leg attacks, trying to go in, but nice counter by Damon Miller getting his legs back and uh, Bo Bentley pulled guard there. Yeah, Bentley, uh, try. it looked like he was trying for the double leg, was unable to secure it. Miller just pushing back against Bentley. And now Bentley trying for a submission here, might have had a, a hand under the arm, but uh, has given that up now as Miller looking to posture up and maybe land some strikes to the body of his opponent. Uh, although it wasn't, uh, uh, again, no strikes to the head of a downed opponent here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship under amateur rules in the Calgary Combative Sports Commission. But still, ground and pound still an option, Jeremy, because throwing those strikes to the body, knees to the body, elbows to the body, that will take its toll over the course of a couple rounds. Absolutely, and uh, Bo Bentley right now doing a great job with a closed guard. He's trying to work inside, trying to get those feet to the hips to push off. Now he's coming through here, trying to get uh, to get to one arm and unable to do it. Now trying to uh, maybe work a rubber guard in is Bo Bentley from the bottom. Damon Miller has been a, a effective from the top, but I wouldn't say he's doing any real damage from the top. No, so far so good if you're Bo Bentley knowing what Damon Miller can do with his strikes. And it looked for a moment like Bentley was going to try and slip a triangle up, but has given up on that attempt as now he returns back to the full guard, trying to throw again, trying to find the triangle. A good job of Damon Miller slipping the armbar attempt as well and getting back into that guard. Again, staying on top, and I, I understand that he may not be doing significant damage, but from the judge's standpoint, cage control matters, and, and Damon Miller is doing that now. Yeah, Damon Miller needs to increase the punches. He doesn't necessarily need to, to land heavy punches, but he needs to remain busy. Because the takedown wasn't a full takedown, it was uh, Bo Bentley pulling guard, and Bo Bentley is very busy on the ground. So in a dominant position, yes, but the referee's standing them up, and this is going to give Bo Bentley an opportunity to come back with about 30 seconds remaining on our FeatureFights.ca round clock. Kick to the midsection, Superman punch attempted, met with a strike of his own. Some big punches landing here, but Bentley keeps coming forward as Miller landing the strikes to the head. Yep, Miller doing an excellent job again with takedown defense. Uh, coming in to try and get those ankles and secure a takedown and possibly steal this round is Bo Bentley trying to remain busy here in the last couple seconds of the round. Throwing punches to the leg, trying to take away the power base of the Miller as we look uh, towards round number two. So they meet in the center of the cage, touch gloves and we're underway, a leg kick returned and Miller immediately backs off knowing where that landed. Bo Bentley going to give himself a bit of a rest and uh, as we saw the low blow, unintentional of course, and they do have to move to neutral corners. So there's no coaching going on during this timeout. Uh, as uh, uh, again, an unintentional low blow, but uh, gotta watch out for that. We have seen uh, that cost a fighter a win tonight, in my opinion, with the uh, majority draw earlier tonight. Uh, we saw Elvis Vukai uh, uh, get a draw in his decision as opposed to a win uh, because of a, a a redacted point after a low blow. And I, I don't think any of these low blows are, are on purpose, but if you aren't responsible with your striking and you're not accurate with your striking, this is what happens. It is a contact sport. It's good though that uh, Bo Bentley is taking his time. Uh, the crowd might not necessarily like it, but he needs to make sure he takes his time. Well, again, uh, a full five minutes allowed on a low blow and Bo Bentley making sure he's 100% because like we said earlier, uh, you saw the effects on it on other fighters and, and they come back too quickly. They don't get the proper, uh, they don't get the proper recovery from the blow and as a result, they're unable to continue. 
Again, uh, Bo Bentley taking his time, making sure that it uh, goes from there. Damon Miller actually in our corner if we were coaching him right now as he yes. sits here. So maybe he should listen to our commentary as I'll, we go forward. I'll refrain from coaching at this point because I'm sure he knows much better than I do. And Bo Bentley telling uh, Brian Beauchamp, yep, I think I'm ready. So it looks like we'll head back into our corners and we'll get back underway here in round number two of uh, our seventh or our eighth fight of the night. Yeah, and, and a good show of respect by these athletes. And you hear a couple boos from the crowd. They just don't understand. It, when you get hit there, it it hurts, and it hurts your whole body. Uh, you feel it throughout, and you feel weakened. Uh, that's where it goes. And a nice takedown here by Bo Bentley. He needs to continue on and finish it. He can't be satisfied with the half takedown. He's got a good grip here and an excellent finish. A nice slam to the ground from Bentley. And looking for an arm immediately was Miller, but was unable to pull it free. And you can see him working his way to the cage and uh, might try and wall walk his way up and get out of this situation. Bentley trying to hold Miller down, but so far Miller's so good as he gets back to his feet. And we'll see if Bentley can secure another takedown. Still has the double leg, but uh, at this point now has let that go. And we'll see if he transitions to a single leg or if he decides to back off. And going down to the ankle, uh, seeing that uh, Damon Miller was putting a lot of support on one and uh, submission attempt here. I don't think he's actually going to try and submit him from here. I think this is more of a, I don't want you shooting it on my leg, so I want you to concentrate on this form of offense that I'm giving you. And uh, not not much pressure there, but uh, if if Bo Bentley doesn't deal with this, with this position, uh, Damon Miller can definitely take advantage. Three big elbows to the back of Bo Bentley, and we saw how that transitioned earlier between Mackenzie Sanger and Jeremy Edwards, with Sanger getting frustrated with the elbows and immediately taking Edwards down and securing the, the victory, in my mind, in that round. But Damon Miller, again, uh, now we get a stoppage up against the cage. There's not much action happening. Bo Bentley backs off, and we restart again here in round number two, one minute on the clock, our feature fights.ca clock, as we get set as these two fighters now trading punches in the center of the cage. And that may be a dangerous game for Bo Bentley. Yeah, that reach is really paying off for Damon Miller. And these shots, it, it, it looks like with his shots that he's going to the legs instead of past the legs. Uh, anybody can tell you when it comes to when it comes to a punch, you don't punch to a guy's face. You try and punch two inches through his face. That means you're getting good contact. And what's happening is the same thing on a leg attack. Bo Bentley needs to shoot two feet past uh, Damon Miller if he wants to be successful. He's shooting to the legs. Damon Miller getting his legs back and able to uh, counter with uh, with with ease at this point. Up against the cage now, Miller has Bentley. Miller in the black trunks, Bentley in the blue. As we're just 10 seconds away from the end of round number two, this one a close round. Bentley having the majority of the control up against the cage, but Miller uh, turning it around after the restart and he'll head back to his corner and get set for round number three. For round number three, Miller in the black trunks, Bentley in the blue as we are in the third and final round of our eighth fight of the night. And that first that first punch by Damon Miller, these are really big punches that he's throwing. Looks like he's trying to stun Bo Bentley, but Bo Bentley giving as good as he's getting and returning the punches. The reach, though, very evident uh, in these hand-to-hand -hand exchanges. Miller continues to throw punches against Bentley, up, who now has him up against the cage. Big strikes coming there. Bentley just trying to get out of the way, and maybe a big right hand there missed by Miller. Bentley comes in with the Superman punch. He seems to be slowing down, Jeremy. Well, he's trying to get inside, and it, it, it's very difficult. Damon Miller is doing an excellent job at keeping him outside. And as Bo Bentley is expending energy getting inside, not only is he getting punched in the face, but he, Damon Miller is doing a great job missing. And these are nice big bombs by Miller. In on the legs is Bo Bentley, and a takedown. The takedown's not gonna do it for Bo Bentley. He really needs to be very active on the ground to win this round back. Well, just one minute gone in round number three here, but Bo Bentley on top and looking gassed. Not a lot of action coming from him that we saw in the first two rounds. But again, I mean, you know, you, you talk about winning this round, but it, 
there could be a case for either fighter having won either of the first two rounds. So uh, certainly no uh, no desire to sit and wait for the finish here from either fighter as they know they need to put it on here in the third round to get the finish. And if I'm uh, Bo Bentley, I need to stay in this position. And uh, here we go, trying again for a Kimura is Damon Miller. And he finds good success with those jiu-jitsu attempts and now trying to sweep from that position as well. Bo Bentley needs to be really be active here. He needs to make a statement on the ground. Uh, Bo, or Damon Miller made a statement on the standing. It looked like Bo Bentley got in on that leg attack to get away more, more than to, to attack from it. And it looks like they're gonna stand him up. If Bo Bentley really needs to come forward here at this point, I think Damon Miller's winning the round even with a takedown against him. But again, I'm not a judge and I'm not uh, sitting where the judges are sitting. So every single view is different. 30 seconds left in round number three, and Damon Miller trying to load up those punches and finish this fight. Bo Bentley up against the cage. He's throwing, but not connecting at this point. Just that one falling behind the head of Miller. And again, Damon Miller is throwing punches up against the cage. Bo Bentley's in trouble. Can he hang on for the last 15 seconds? Likely now as he goes down to the ground. Damon Miller letting him up with 10 seconds to go. Bentley going to be slow to get up, I imagine. Not wanting to take any more punches here with just the final seconds. Third and final round is over. We'll go to the judges' scorecards. The winner by split decision in the blue corner, Damon!